Hello friends and family, Stephen from Small Adventures here. I was heading to my dad's house to get the final video for this buddy build that we did. Stay tuned. First up, let's show you dads. Now, both of these kits came from the Lindsberg 1940 Ford kit. I'll show a picture of that. I'll put it up here somewhere. It's, uh, this kit came out in the like 91, 92. Was never the best kit. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not much of a kit. They were obviously looking at AMT's kit when they designed this kit because there's so many things it looks like it was just stolen right off of it. Uh, that's between them and them though. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Dad does. Dad's model does sit a little bit lower right height to mine, which I really like. That's what I was going for with mine, but he did a better job at it than I did. And he didn't put the bumpers on his. He liked the look of it without bumpers, which I do too. I think it looks really good. Painted with Rust-Oleum paints. And these decals, he tells me, came from a Corvette kit. And not only that, the ones on the side doors here was one decal that he cut in half, put one on each side. I thought that was real creative. Now the stance is perfect on this, in my opinion. Now the wheels look to me like a NASCAR wheels. He said he got them out of his parts box. It is treaded tires on it, but they look really good on the car. They tuck up in the fenders really nice. Everything else is, uh, at least on the exterior, is right out of the box. The interior is box stock. Let's see if I can get you a closer shot of the interior. Not much to the interior of a 44 coupe. Um, excuse me. And under the hood, he lifted the engine from an AMT 1960 Ford Starliner. I think it was a Starliner, is what you call it. So that would be. What, a 352 or a 360 V8? I'm not real sure. I would have to check. It looks really good in here. Multiple carburation. It's even got fuel lines. Run into the carburetors. Snug fit in there. It looks really good in my opinion. Now his undercarriage and just plain black like mine usually are. Uh, he scratch built this exhaust using exhaust kit, uh, exhaust and uh, parts, the trees that the parts come on, the sprue, and uh, heated it up and bent it to the way he needed it. That's pretty neat, Dad. Now, on his suspension, we both lowered them the same way. Uh, I don't know if I have any pics of it. If I do, I'll put it up here so you'll know what I'm talking about. But we just ground down on it. Uh, he used a Dremel. I didn't feel like charging my Dremel up, so I just used uh, uh, some metal files. We just ground down on it and, until uh, the part fit up in there to lower the front. On the back, he did the same thing. There's a, I don't know if you can see it. Now, when it's stuck before it's modified, right here, that the banjo rear end sits down on. There's a big nub in there, that, and there's there's a peg in a hole. Is how you mount it in there. And he took his Dremel and he ground that way down in there. Uh, I did mine different. I'll, I'll describe how I did mine when I'm showing it. 
And he sanded off all the chrome trim except for the door handles, which he painted body color. Which they're molded in, so that makes it easy. And it shines up real nice. Uh, 90 street rod flavor. One minute, 37 seconds later. I kind of went the other direction on mine. I'll post a picture up of the, the artist's picture uh, drawing that inspired this one. Uh, not an exact replica of it, but it's, it's really obvious that I, that's what I was looking at when I made this kit. Uh, I added the bumpers onto mine. I forgot to rust them up. I meant to. I may or may not take the bumpers back off of it to make it just like this picture. But I made mine kind of old school hot roddy with uh, like it had been sitting in a barn somewhere and somebody just pulled it in the garage and made a hot rod out of it. Um, used a few more parts from other kits than Dad did. The wheels and tires, uh, these steely wheels came from an AMT, I think it's a 62. Hold on a second. Yep, a 1962 Pontiac Catalina kit. Hold on one second, I'll show you the kit. One of those kits donated as, as wheels. The tires are from AMT parts pack pad printed white walls. Uh, that that came with uh, two wide, uh, four wide white walls and four thin line white walls. I used two of each on this. Let's see, what else did I use? I used uh, painted with Tamiya paints. I, you know, I primered it and sprayed it gloss black and then miscoated it with Rust-Oleum matte black over top of it to give it that faded paint look. Hand painted the flames on there. I used a silver Sharpie to draw the outlines. I think I did a little better on this side than I did the other side. And of course, I weathered everything up. I used uh, paint line accents. Uh, Tamiya black panel accent color for the wheels and stuff. Uh, grease them up a little bit. You can see there. Yeah, this rust is, I forget the name, what color of paint it was, but it's just one color from one craft paint uh, that I bought for 50 cents at Walmart. <laughs> Brushed on and, and, and kind of, you know, give it that effect to it. I used a silver sharpie to outline the chrome since it's not supposed to be shiny. Every rust spot on here was used with that craft paint. The interior is right out of the box except for the steering wheel. Uh, I did take some parts. Uh, if y'all remember last year or whenever it was I showed a picture of this of a Revell 49 Mercury custom kit that was the model that got me back into building around 2008-2009 Put a picture of it up here it sort of survived the house fire but it was uh, it needed a complete rebuild or just to keep it for nostalgia but as it was starting to fall apart too i did borrow some parts of it from it to put on this build so parts of it's going to live on that steering wheel came out of that mercury kit Let's see if i can get you a closer picture of it didn't add any detail to it at all that's exactly how it was in the mercury kit the way i had it built and under the hood is that big block that's based on a Cadillac engine. <coughs> Excuse me, a horse today. With a tricarb setup and that uh, uh, beehive oil filter right out of the Mercury kit. Now, it took lots of cutting and filing to get this engine in this in this engine bay. It was just simply too big. It flat out would not fit with the automatic transmission that was in the Mercury kit. So I took my razor saw and cut the transmission off and grafted the little short transmission that came in this kit onto this engine. But you can see it's a really tight fit down in there. What you can't see is just how much grinding and cutting that I had to do. Yeah, tedious process, but I think it's worth it. I didn't have to do any weathering to the engine at all where it survived the house fire. It was already uh, weathered from smoke and soot from the fire. <laughs> it made it simple. I think it looks right in there. It's, it's, uh, the engine mounts that are molded into this engine from Revell 
are mounted in the engine mounts that are molded into the chassis from Lindbergh. So everything fit as as far as uh, engine position, everything fit perfect. Now, I have not put an exhaust on this model. And you, you look at the oil pan there, you can see some of the cutting that I had to do. It wouldn't fit in there with the oil pan on it. Uh, I weathered it up just a little bit. I will eventually home make me some uh, exhaust to put up under there. And in my kit, I only had one headlight lens. So I've got these two old AMT built up kits that I bought off eBay years ago before the house fire and I kept them on display in my shed uh, where I worked on bicycles at the burnt house. I'll put a picture of them up here. So what I did is I popped one of the headlight lenses out of one of those kits to add to this one. And I only had one tail light in my box. So these are actually AMT tail lights. And the difference is, pull dad's over here, if you look real close, the Lindbergh kit tail lights have three ribs, three chevrons, three rows, however you want to say it. And the AT AMT kit only has two. <laughs> but that's basically all of mine. Um, I'm real happy with it, real happy with the way it looks. I like the look of it better without the hood, but the hood does fit. That was important to me to make sure that the hood would fit with that engine in there. I think they both turned out really nice. And if you notice, uh, one other thing I did that he didn't, I shaved all of the chrome trim off, including the door handles and all of that chrome trim that was uh, on the hood that uh, this center rib that comes on down here. I thought the old hot rod look would look better with that. I think his looks perfect the way it is. So there you have it. Two different modelers take on the exact same kit. That's what's so great about these buddy builds. I've really enjoyed this, uh, doing this with my dad. This this was really fun for me. Five minutes later. I also wanted to make a quick addition to this video. This is dad's... He built this right before we started on this buddy build. This is the AMT sedan delivery kit, the one you see everywhere in, in Hobby Lobby with all the Coca-Cola decals on it, with all the other Coca-Cola cars. And he built this one right out of the box, except for these wheels that came from his parts box. He can't remember what to come off of. And I had a decal sheet uh, that I got at Hobby Town. So we used one of those on this as well. Otherwise, this kit's built right out of the box. Uh, I think he used... Dupacolor Automotive lacquer paint on this. Of course, he lowered it. I'm not sure the process of lowering the AMT has been a long time since I built one. I think this one looks really good, too. I've got the hood on there crooked. The hood fits on there better. That's my bad. I'll go ahead and take it off, though, so you can see that engine. If it'll come off. Well, I don't want to take a chance. There we go. Thought I was going to have to break it off. This is the engine right out of the box. It, now this kit comes with two engines. It comes with either a Buick or an Oldsmobile. It's the same exact engine. It's actually a Buick nailhead engine. But some boxes listed as an Oldsmobile engine. It comes with that uh, triple carb setup and everything. But I thought this was a really nice model too. Now, I'll probably just glue my back door shut. I don't know if he did or not. I'm not going to try it. In the interior, kind of 90s style and, and modern style, too. Just The exhaust just kind of ends right there up under the cab. I think he got the stance perfect on this. Let's see if I can get this hood back in here. There we go. Dad, I think you did a great job on both these. Makes me want to drag out my sedan delivery and build it.
really nice. I just want to take a quick moment uh, to say thank you to all our veterans, all of the men and women who serve every day today, and all the people who will serve in the future. You are greatly appreciated. I'm a veteran myself, uh, so I consider every one of you brothers and sisters. As you see this, it is after Veterans Day. I had actually intended to make a short video to post up on Veterans Day. It's 12, 14 a.m. It's actually Veterans Day right now. Um, my mom's mom my grandmother uh, who i had talked about was having health issues she passed away today so i kind of put a damper on that but i want to greatly thank everybody who serves and has served you are greatly appreciated your family see you in the next video hold up Yeah, the